everybody welcome to another vlog it's been a while sorry about that <laughs> um yeah it's been an interesting couple months with life so we'll get into that later um i just want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed who has watched the, my videos who has you know taken time to spend with me on this channel. Um, it means a lot, uh, especially in kind of the times we're in, that you would take the time to, you know, hang out with me and chat and all of that. Thank you to everyone who's been leaving comments. That it, I just appreciate it so much. Um, I care about all of you, everybody who's watching, and I hope that uh, you're going to have an amazing holiday season. As you can see, we have decorated just a little bit. I am not a great home decorator, so yeah, here's my little... <laughs> That's about it! <laughs> no, I am not the greatest at that, so it is... It, this is my fest festivus right now. Um, a couple little housekeeping things to talk about. First off, I am working with my hubs to try to get a schedule set up because now that things have gotten a little bit better, my energy is a lot better now and we're starting to find our new normal, I guess. Uh, it's been a lot easier. And I think we can work out getting the videos done every two weeks. It's The reason it's been so difficult is, one, me not feeling well and all of that. And then the kids being the kids. I have a 16-month-old and then a 5-year-old. And trying to find a time during the day in Canada, which is where I live, by the way. I live in Alberta, Canada. Uh, it gets dark. It starts getting real dark like at 3. So, yeah, trying to find time where there's good daylight and good lighting is a challenge. Because I don't have a camera that records in a high enough quality or can handle, like, evening filming. And I don't have, like, a ton of lights or anything that can do that. So trying to find a good time on like a Saturday or a Sunday where I'm not completely burnt out at the end of the week has been a struggle, but I'm doing a lot better. So here we are Saturday about 1245, almost one o'clock doing a film. Um, there may be an abrupt stop in this video if my son wakes up <laughs> and I'll have to go get him and take him to my husband who's downstairs in the basement with my daughter hanging out and playing. So that may happen. The second part of housekeeping is the channel is going to go a little bit different. When I started this channel I was more trying to focus on crochet because that's what I was comfortable with um, and I did a lot of. I still do. It's probably it still is my most comfortable and you know my hobby that I always if I need to make a gift or if I need something done that's what I do however uh, recently and there will be a whole we'll have a whole story about why this is important and yeah it'll it'll be a little bit of story time I recently got back into cross stitching with a vengeance with a passion and there is a big reason for that so we will talk about that later. And I think for vlogs, I'm going to start doing floss tube videos. I will still be showing crochet stuff. I will still be showing knitting stuff. But I think for now, my big focus is going to be cross stitch. And again, I said, like I said, there is a big reason why. So if you hear a weird eh, eh, in the background, that is my nemesis, you may laugh, 
we have this magpie that torments my dogs and torments me and rips into our trash and pecks at our how I, it hates me and I don't like it and yeah it's illegal to do certain things to it so it's just gonna scream I guess because if you haven't heard of magpie they literally sound like a child screaming it's very horrifying especially when I first moved here that was terrifying I literally thought a child was dying I go in the backyard and just on my deck it's going ah! so anyway I will still be doing crochet stuff, knitting stuff, all that kind of stuff I'll still be showing. Um, I don't know about tutorials, what that's going to look like. Those are so hard for me to film and get or get organized and get that together with my kids and kind of the age that they're at right now. It's very, very challenging. So, um, you know, if they show up, they show up. If they don't, they don't. And that's kind of where I have to resign myself to right now and that's okay um let's start with this big boy this is a blanket i finished and i'm so happy because this blanket i made for myself which i don't usually do but i bought the yarn and i made it so i'd have a nice cozy lap blanket it's about just a lap afghan size so that's what i did um this is the Modern Granny Stripe Blanket by Daisy Farm Crafts. It is a free pattern that you can do yourself anytime. Uh, I used chunky, paint box chunky yarn. Uh, and I did the striping pattern a little different. So that's the changes I made. But other than that, yeah, I just followed the pattern. It was very easy. Uh, it is one of those patterns where you kind of need to keep tabs on, like, exactly what row you're on to get it to get the edges to be at least somewhat straight. So I will say that. Other than that, it's very very easy. Um, there's supposed to be a border on this blanket. There is not, and I will tell you why there's not a border on this blanket. It is, ugh, sorry, reaching. It is the holiday season, which means, like I do have done every year for my kids, I make them something. Usually it's a stuffed animal. Sometimes, I think one year I did like a hoodie for my daughter. Um, but I usually make them something. And I, w with it being the pandemic and it hard to get supplies, I had a choice to make that I could either finish this off with a border or use that yarn to make gifts for my kids. Cause it's a very, very good soft acrylic yarn. And I chose to make gifts for my kids. So the first one that I finished is this horse. He's so cute. This is for my son, Sam. He is 16 months old. He loves horses quite a lot. Uh, Nay is one of the few sounds that he is able to make. So, yeah. Horse <laughs> is what he, is what I made him. He loves horses. He has one, he's got one or two little horse toys that he likes to run around with and go, nay, and make them, you know. In his mind, they're galloping. In mom mind, he is smashing them against every surface of this house. Because he is. So... <laughs> I made him this horse. I had a really hard time finding a horse pattern that looked like just like a regular horse, right? They either had like weird floppy front feet and sat, or they were more unicorn-esque and had like frills and stuff on them, or they didn't look right, like their heads were giant and their bodies were tiny or something like that, and I, I just wanted a horse, plain old horse. I did manage to find a pattern it didn't look like, I think there might have been like one other project on this pattern, and it's a free pattern. And it was, it was great, like, well written, everything was easy to follow. This is, it's called Nathan the Horse by Tamara or Tamara Ramsey. You can find it on Ravelry. I'll also have a link in the description. Uh, most, like all of the stuff that I talk about, I'll try to put links in the description so you can find it. Um, 
yeah, it was easy to follow and he turned out great. I did make some mod uh, some mild changes uh, on the feet. Uh, she just had it where it was just kind of like a cone shape. I did uh, right before, uh, right when the increases stopped, I did a round of single crochet in the back loop only so that it would have kind of more, a little bit more of a flat foot. Like you can see it's kind of got like a an edge to it. So it looked more hoofy, if that's a word. Uh, I did the mane differently than what she said, just like I tried to control directions of where the hair was laying to make it look more like a mane. Um, and I was trying to go for like Clydesdale and they kind of like have shaggy floppy hair all over their faces. So the hair, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the hair, if you've never done a horse mane or a doll hair don't <laughs> it's, it's horrible worth it <sighs> uh, you know personal suffering that you're inflicting on yourself yep yeah. mm-hmm that's what that is you are plugging individual strands of yarn one at a time and that's I mean if you can see like it's a lot there's a lot here it took forever so the funny story I did have it on my Instagram which you can follow me on Instagram which is doodle and string on Instagram I had a story on my Instagram about this I had some leftover Patton's Astra yarn in white and I thought to myself hey let's use up some scraps to make the horse mane Patton's Astra yarn is a very common yarn that you could find anywhere in the city. So if I run out, I can easily just go to the store and get more. I foolishly went ahead and started the main. I put two hours work in the main of plugging this hair in. I ran out and I looked at every store in the city of Edmonton. Not one had a single ball of Patton's Astra White. I looked in every store about 30 minutes outside of the city of Edmonton, and not one had a single ball of Patton's Astra White. I looked at stores an hour and a half from the city of Edmonton for a ball of Patton's Astra White, and nay, I could find none. And I had to sit there and take out two hours worth of hair because I am foolish. <laughs> so I did that and I bought a new ball. I think this is the Burnett Beehive or Patton's Beehive or something. Doesn't really matter. It's just, it's thin white yarn. And I redid the main and it took me probably five hours of plugging hair to get this main. And then I thought, you know, I apparently love torturing myself. And this is supposed to be a Clydesdale, so why not do fluffy feet? And as you can see, he doesn't have fluffy feet because when I did the fluffy feet, I cut it funny when I finished, I finished three of them and thought maybe I should go ahead and trim it. And if you've ever cut bangs, it's, pr it's pretty much that experience completely. I cut it too short and they stuck out like the rings on Saturn and would not smooth down and so I had to take them all out so he does not have fluffy feet because I'm because we're done I'm done with the hair not again never again so Nathan the horse is done um, I probably hope his name will probably change to horsey because that's about the speed that we're at at 16 months old and yes before anybody says I know it's going to a toddler a toddler boy who likes to grab things and I know that all that work on the hair is probably going to go kaputs because he's gonna rip it all out <laughs> ah the things we do for love <laughs> so next up so like I said before I did this blanket there was lots of these colors left over because I over purchased on the colors and didn't get like a ton of extra white. <laughs> Typical. 
of me. And I'm making stuffed animals for my kids. I need to kind of be quiet here because my daughter's downstairs and she has no idea. So the next one that I am currently working on, so it's not finished. I think that's really all. I have one more f work in progress, but since we're kind of on the story, we'll continue. Um, this is going to be, she asked for a stuffed, giant stuffed octopus. And at the time, this was kind of the best uh, thing I could find for it. Sorry, there's a stitch marker in here. There we go. Um, this pattern is Crochet Octopus by Little Crochet Love. Sorry, my notes are over there. <laughs> crochet Octopus by Little Crochet Love on Etsy. This is a PDF pattern that you can buy on Etsy. I think for me, Canadian, it was like eight something, like 850 or something like that. Very, very well written. I am very impressed with her. She did an excellent job, explained everything well, plenty of photos, because some there was like, like one spot that was a little weird. It was the spot kind of around where these little floops are right here. Plenty of photos, explained it perfectly, explained how to do the tentacles, everything just perfect. She did amazing. Totally go support her if you want to make one of these. I do realize this is going to look a little more like a jellyfish, but you know, it's going to be fine. Here, I've got a few. I only have a few tentacles done. I don't have them all, but yeah, basically it's going to be, you know, one of these, right? And then the, the it has a cutesy little face, which I haven't done yet. It has a cute little face, and then there's a cute little starfish on the side of its head. So it's going to be pretty adorable. Because she wanted a giant stuffed octopus, and... I thought about buying one, but they all looked a little too realistic and kind of creepy, and I really did not want that want that around. But like a week ago, I found, I don't know if any of you have heard of Apollo the Octopus crochet pattern. I hadn't. When I was researching doing to do this so I'd have time to get it done, I did not see him. I might put a picture somewhere up here. I didn't see him. I wish I did, and I don't have time to do it now. Absolutely don't, because the pattern says he's like the equivalent of an Afghan, and we are about six days to Christmas, and there is no way. And I'm kind of sad, I'm a little heartbroken because he is perfect. He would have been more perfect than this, but I know that she's going to love this. If she makes any sort of comment on it, I am going to make it for her birthday, for sure. I may just make it for me, because he is wild. And I think I need that in my life. And I actually have, so I've got like a bright mint yarn that I think I could use. So he'd be like mint green on the top and then, you know, pink suckers and, and white. I think he would look pretty cool. So that is my next thing I'm working on. I have everything done except the tentacles. There's, I have three tentacles and I'm using these colors. That was my hook. Um, I'm using these colors, as you can see, just the leftovers. I'm not going to use the tan because... Eh. So I'm doing pink, the pink, the purple, the blue, and I'm going to double up on the blue and the purple. Because I don't want too much pink, because this pink's kind of almost like fleshy-esque. I don't really want too much of that in there. I want it to be kind of bright and happy, so... I'll probably use the tan for the starfish, though, on the head. Sorry if my camera's all weird now. I bumped it. Yay. Okay, so that's all of the kids' stuff. Blanket the kids' stuff. The next thing I have is a hat that I finished. Um, again, I'm really bad at making sure I have stuff for myself done and ready to go. For, for like, you know, winter, because it's Canada, it is cold. Uh, I needed a hat, so I went and I made myself a messy bun hat. Um, I am not great with my hair. It is thick, and it frizzes, and it's like wavy weird, and it gets staticky really easily, and it's dry up here, so I hate wearing hats because my hair does that thing where the hat comes off and it goes everywhere and I can't get it down. 
So ponytail it goes, even in the winter, or like right now, you know, up in the clip because it is just static city and it, I, I don't like the feeling of my hair all sticking to me. I just hate it. Um, someday when, you know, maybe if my face can pull it off someday, I'll do like, I seriously will just do like a pixie cut because I can't. Um, I don't think I'd look great in it, but eh. anyway, this is a messy bun hat. If you don't know what a messy bun hat is, it is basically a hat that you, that at the end, beginning or end, you crochet around a elastic. So when you put it on, it kind of go, your hair bun pops through and it just sits. And so instead of like a pom pom, it's your hair. And I love this hat. It is perfect. It is exactly what I need in my life for the winter. This is called the Anna Beanie, and I can't remember the designer, but it's on Ravelry. Um, there's options for the messy bun. There's options just to finish the regular hat. This was super, <laughs> my dog's asleep. <laughs> Sorry, he's dreaming. Um, this is a super easy pattern to do. It did not take me more than like an hour to get done. Swiffer, wakeys. doesn't take more than an hour to get done and yeah that was it and the only thing I did differently is I I don't think it actually calls for the hair tie on the pattern but I wanted to do that anyway so I'd have you know a little more give kind of came in on the hair the messy bun a little bit better and so I basically did it all the way to the end of the pattern but instead of just finishing it off I crocheted one row around a hair tie and then I finished it off. So that's how I have like this stretchy section right here. So for crochet finished things, that is it. We will move on to knitting. All right, so for knitting, I've only done one thing. I've only kind of halfway finished one thing. There's probably other things that I've done that I'm just not thinking about, but with Christmas, my mind is kind of in, you know, Christmas present mode. That's, that's where we are. So for knitting, what I've done so far is I'm making my husband a pair of boot socks. Basically, it's just a really thick sock. Uh, instead of fingering weight, I'm using worsted weight. The pattern that I'm following is Tin Can Knits Rye. If you've never knit a sock, Use their patterns. Do the Tin Can It's Rye pattern first. It is so well written, like major kudos to them. All of their beginner knitting, like uh, they have one for a sweater, they have one for a hat, they have one for, I think they have one for like mittens. They're amazing. They explain everything so well. Illustrations, pictures, everything you need. Everything is well written. If you're learning socks, that is the place to go. They explain everything so, so well. Um, it doesn't look like this. I changed the cuff going down into the toe. Uh, the stitch, I found it off of another free sock on Ravelry. I think it's called the Blueberry Waffle. I will try to find it. But basically, it's like a ribbed waffle stitch. So you knit two, purl two for two rows, and then you just knit two rows and then knit two, purl two for two rows, and then knit two rows, and you get kind of this like ribbed waffly thing going on. And it makes, it's almost like a really cushy thermal. It, it just, I think it looks really nice. I think he'll like it. It kind of adds some cush, cush to it, so when he's wearing his work boots, it should be extra nice and smushy and padded. Um, I didn't reinforce the heel or the toes, and I kind of wish I did, but we'll see how these wear because the yarn is drops, yeah, drops charisma. And I know it doesn't have nylon, but it was cheap and affordable and wool. So that's where we are. But I don't remember the color. It's just like a heathered gray. I have one sock done and I am this far on sock number two. It should, they don't take long. I think getting this section done only took me like an hour 
of dedicated knitting to get this far. So it won't, I'll, this will, I could probably finish this today if I worked on it. So that's it for knitting. All right. I'm going to be very cliche and kitschy and say it's time for the tea or to spill the tea. So, if you're curious, I'm drinking a orange oolong. <laughs> Let's talk about the cross stitch thing. Buckle up, buttercup, because this is going to get a while. <laughs> All right. I am going to try my best not to cry. I'm a big fat liar and I'm going to cry. <laughs> but I will try. And I may have to re I may have to try to film this a couple times. So let's start with uh what uh, three weeks, four weeks ago. We got a call about my husband's mother. She had a stroke several years ago and it left her arm, she basically couldn't, she didn't have use in her right arm, I believe. And she is a very crafty lady. She sews, she knits, she crochets, she does, she taught me how to do this, what I do. She, she put the passion in me to learn. And I love her so much because when I was first married, you know, I didn't, I, my mom is a single mom and, and she was busy and, and working super hard. And, you know, I didn't have a lot of like that uh, kind of stuff available to learn very well. My grandma crocheted a bit, but she, the, the age that I was and the age that she was, she was kind of getting older and didn't really have the patience to deal with me. <laughs> Not many do, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I learned a lot from her. And when she had her stroke and she couldn't really do much, it really broke my heart. One of the things she could do was cross stitch because she could do that with her left hand and you know, that only can be like one hand, right? And she has a, she had a stand so she could set her stand up and just use her left hand and she could cross stitch. Anyway, we got a call about four weeks ago um, saying that she had another stroke. My husband, all of our family live 2,000 miles away in the United States in Kansas. That's where we're from. We moved to about six years ago, we moved here to Canada. My husband's originally Canadian. He was born in Nova Scotia. So that's kind of how we got here. The work was here. So he moved and yeah. So we've been here for six years. We're in the middle of a horrible pandemic. The borders are closed. There was a real fear of trying to figure out, are we going to be able to get there to see her? I don't know. And my heart breaks for all of the families during this time who have had to make, have had to go through this, where a loved one has passed and they didn't get to say goodbye. They couldn't go, there was no funeral, they couldn't see them is, you know, part of what makes us human is how we treat our dead. And this pandemic has pulled humanity out of that. And it, and it rips my heart that this is part of what we're going through. Anyway, she is okay. She had her 
stroke. It was a fairly minor one. However, it has left her partially blind in one eye. And she's... I'm not sure if she's even able to cross stitch anymore, do anything. I know that that's been what's kind of helped her kind of keep her, you know, active, mind active. Um, she's reading a lot because that's one of the things the doctor suggested to keep, to strengthen the eye back up. So when this all happens, my mother-in-law, cross-stitching was like her big thing. I have several. I should, ah, I should, I'll do that next video. I should have pulled down some of her things that she said, but we'll do that next video. Um, we have several uh, projects that she's done here at the house. Uh, when this happened, I don't know. I don't know why that was like the thing I, I wanted to do, but it was. I just, I was like, I have some stuff. I'm, I'm going to cross stitch. I just need to do it. I, do, I don't know if it was just my spirit needing to connect with her in some manner to, to process what was going on and all of the stress and the fears and the anxieties that was happening. But that's where I went. Um, I started one thing. I'm not going to show it because it, I didn't hardly get anywhere on it. Um, I was just trying to like scrounge what I could from what I had. A couple days later, literally a couple days later, I decided to check on my family because I knew that cases, case counts were getting crazy there and I was just, you know, I just thought I need to call my grandma. I am very close to my grandma. There is a whole heap and load of stuff we're not going to go into with like my my past and stuff. So just know that when it comes if to be if if there is a godly woman that I could be like and ref, my life could reflect, it would be her. I love her so much. And not being with her has been one of the hardest things living here. Not being with her, not being with, you know, my mom is able to travel, so I get to see her. I mean, I haven't seen her in a while, so, and my sister. But, like, my, my grandma can't travel, so she's a person where, you know, I, I need to make that trip every year to see her. My heart needs that. And I haven't been able to for two, for almost two years. For two years, yeah. Um, I called her and my grandfather answered the phone and apparently they both caught COVID. They, my grandpa's in fairly good health. My grandma is not. Um, apparently they had it back in October and my grandma wasn't, wasn't doing great. I didn't know there they're those kind of people where they don't want to worry anyone so they don't really want to talk about that stuff so anyway she's doing okay she's recovering and all of this kind of accumulated in me and I found a free pattern online because remember I was doing the cross stitch and that's kind of where my heart was at the time I was like I need to do this because I miss Rosanna I miss her so much and this makes me think of her and feel near her in a way. So I found this free pattern online. And I did this for my grandmother. So this is very, very, very meaningful pattern to me because not only was it a chance to really try to connect with me, yeah, I call my mother-in-law, but you know, I can't really explain it. Just being able to do that the thing that she loved doing the most. So I, um, here's the pattern and it says all hearts come home for Christmas. And I made it for my grandma because I'm 2000 miles away. The borders are closed. Even if I wanted to, I can't. 
but there is no pandemic, there is no virus, there is no, there's nothing this world could possibly throw to keep my heart from going home and being there in spirit and, and prayer and everything. My heart is there with them. And especially around the holidays, my heart goes home for Christmas. And this Christmas is gonna be difficult because there's no family here this, this year. But, you know, I'm so glad that we have uh, things like this that are generational, um, crafts, painting, whatever it is that connects you in spirit to a loved one. Expression, artistic expressions, creative expressions that can communicate when words aren't enough. You know, it's why people dance, it's why people sing, it's why people create, because sometimes words aren't enough. So yeah, this is my finished piece. I'm going to get some fabric to make kind of make it bigger because I did kind of cut it small. So I'm going to get some fabric to sew around as like a border and then I'm going to just attach it to some foam board and mail it. And I know it's not going to get there in time for Christmas, but um, it's okay. When we found uh, the postal service had like a announcement basically that like good luck getting anything at Christmas. So if it wasn't gonna, if I could have did a rush job and tried to get it done like two weeks ago, but it still wouldn't have gotten there for Christmas at all, not even close. So I figured I might as well just take my time and try to make it as perfect as possible and it'll just get there when it gets there. Cause that's kind of where we're at. Cause all of the pandemic and the mailing is out of control right now because everybody's mailing for Christmas this year. So, when all of this happened, sorry, I need a drink. <laughs> when all this happened, my husband, being the sweet guy that he is, he's never really, like, really taken a big personal interest in, it's not that he hasn't appreciated or enjoyed like my crochet and knitting and stuff, but it's not like he's ever like gone in like, oh, I found this yarn. I want this to give this to you. He has not, not, or this pattern I saw, I think you should, you know, I think you should do this. Never really that. He's super supportive. Of course he likes getting stuff, <laughs> but the cross stitch was different. And I'm thinking it has something to do with his mom. I don't really know. I'm not a mind reader. I am terrible at emotions. I really am. And, and reading that. So, I don't know, but lately he has been super supportive and, and encouraging me to, to do the cross stitch. He bought me this pattern. And he nailed it. My two favorite Christmassy things in this world, aside from, um, you know, I love me my nativity that I have. I don't have it out right now. I need to get it out. Um, besides my nativity that I have, which is beautiful, is chickadees and holly. Those are my two favorite things. We have chickadees that have built nests and they believe the, it's not the hedge, it's the tree next door, but they hang out in our hedge and they like to eat on our bird feeder and hang out on the fence so I can look out the window over here and see them. So it has a little chickadee on it and all of these pretty little holly leaves and it says Mary. This is the Songbirds Garden Series 2 by Cottage Garden Samplings. Um, yeah, uh, it is really fun. I am not using the over dyed flosses. So if you're new to cross stitch, there's the regular DMC that you see in like all of the craft stores. And then there's all, didn't know until recently, there's a whole other world 
of floss out there where these genius people have taken either DMC or something else and they've over dyed it so there's some variegation to it. So if you can see like on the front here, like especially in this light green on the holly, you can totally tell that there's some gentle var variegation and it, it just adds like a realistic thing. I am not a rich lady. I could not afford to get the hand dyed. So I have DMC and this is my progress. So far, that's what I've mm, let's turn them straight. This is what I've done so far. Um, I've used DMC. I did have to. This has been a problem because when I got the floss, the color of the floss did not actually match the number that it said. So I don't know if the dye lot was different or what was going on there, but. The outline of the cherries looked almost exactly like the inside of the cherries. So I have gone and completely changed that. I need to rip out the, the border of the cherries here. So I'm using for the inside, it's a little sparkly. That's because I'm using the new DMC Etoile. I am too Kansan for French, you guys. <laughs> Etoile. Get my husband up here to say that. He can do that. So I'm using the crimson, I believe. So my cherries will have a little sparkle. I was trying to use the called one of the called for reds as the border, but it's not showing up enough. So right here, I switched it to like 814, I believe is the number. So it is a little darker than this one. Um, I'm going to see how that looks when I add some of the red in here and then if it looks pretty good I will rip out the other border of the cherries but I still want the sparkly in the middle because I think that's gonna look really cool especially because it's going on the wall I'm doing this on 32 count stormy sky stormy cloud Lugana forgive me this is very new to me I had no idea I had no idea this stuff existed from what I remembered from cross-stitching was Dimensions Kits on Ada. That was it. That was all I knew. I had some Ada and I had some Dimensions Kits when I was trying to do this. By the way, this is done on, um, I think it's called DMC Catalina Linen 14 count, 16 count, 14 count. I don't remember. Uh, basically, it's pretty much Fiddler's Cloth, and I have a roll. I got another roll because I did actually like this a lot. I know a lot of people don't like Ada, but like for, I felt like for like ornaments, it's just like the perfect natural linen, and it's really easy to work on. So I got... Michael's just happened to have a roll. They have like nothing right now, and when they had the one roll, I went and got it. So, um, yeah, this is my progress. I am, I, I am struggling to get Christmas presents done because I, I am loving this so much. I love the style, the, the very vintage -y sampler style. I can't, like, <laughs> sorry, I'm, like, buzzing with excitement for this, but I, I want to just do this all the time. It makes me think of home. It makes me think of my mother-in-law. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's what I need right now. So my vlog videos are going to have a lot of this, I guarantee you, for a while because of everything that we talked about. Um, if this is not for you, I respect that. Like I said, there still will be crochet and stuff. Definitely still doing that. <laughs> it's my son. Okay, so the last thing before we finish, I know this is kind of long, but it's been a while since I've gotten to hang out with you guys, is a, one more story. Sorry if I'm just Miss Storyteller today. There's been a lot. This is why I need to do these every two weeks so that I'm not trying to cram, like, you know, so much. Um, so this whole cross-stitch thing happened, and... My husband being super sweet that he is, 
went on, we have a thing here called Kijiji, and it's basically like a Craigslist, but Canada. And, you know, you have to be really careful, especially now with the pandemic, to make sure that you're following all of the social distancing and that, you know, everything is sanit you know, sanitary and all that. Because, you know, you don't want to just, like, go into somebody's home and, right? Well, this was before all of the new restrictions happened. He found a Kijiji ad, and all it said was, like, multiple craft books for sale. And that was it. That's all it said. It didn't even say, like, what? It said, like, cross-stitching, quilting, all this kind of stuff. And he saw the cross-stitching. He's like, hey, Em, do you want to, like, call or message this lady and just see if you can go over and, like, maybe ask her what she has, see what's there? It's like... Sure, I can, you know, I can guide it, kind of get prices and stuff, what she's selling. So, called her. It was the first thing he answered was the sweetest old lady. She had a really hard time hearing. <laughs> and I am not good at like, I have an issue where I can't like yell without yelling, if you know what I mean. If I raise my voice, I sound angry. <laughs> And I didn't want to sound angry at this poor lady. So I was having a hard time. But, you know, she said, yeah, sure. Why don't you come on over, you know, wear a mask. And I told her I had to wear gloves, you know, and bring hand sanitizer just so that I'm not, like, getting my germs all over her stuff when I'm looking through everything. So that's how we did it. Um, went to her house. Oh my goodness, I opened that door and I thought I was going to have an absolute heart attack. This woman looked exactly, like I, I, I thought I was going to throw up. I was so shook, I was shooketh. She looked exactly like one of my great aunts, one of my grandma's sisters. And they all have a very distinct, the way they look she looked just like I and I, I later on I called my mom I was like I don't know which one it was I was so little I don't remember but she looked just like her and she was short like her she had the same haircut the same color eyes the same color oh it was really freaky <laughs> I kind of stood there I was like hi oh you know, like everything stopped for a moment, but she smiled. She was so nice. And I go into the house and it's stacks of things just everywhere. Right? Like boxes and packing and, and stacks of things. Get the tissues. <laughs> this is, this is going to take a turn. So she had all of the cross stitch stuff out on the couch in boxes and she said, you know, just go through what you want. Magazines are 25 cents. You know, she wasn't charging hardly anything for this. And all she said is, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, and I was kind of like, okay. Looked around on her wall. She had amazing cross stitch that she did. She had a giant picture of poppies. It was huge. It was so gorgeous. She had, you know, ones that she did chips. She had all kinds of stuff just hanging all over her walls of all this cross stitch. And I was like, being me, just as a pref preface for all this, I'm not good at like the emotion. Anybody who knows me, if you do like the, the personality thing, I'm an INTP. This is an INTP nightmare because we are not good at this, <laughs> of, of navigating really tense emotional situations because we tend to be very blunt and that's not helpful. So this was a big, big challenge to try to navigate this. So I asked her, I was like, oh, how long have you been cross-stitching? She goes, oh, I've been doing it since, you know, since forever. My mother did it. I did it, you know, I made my kids a whole bunch of stuff. I made everybody lots of things. And my husband just loved my cross-stitch like oh your husband she says yeah he died a month ago and my brain's going oh no so I kept looking through stuff it's like oh he did I'm so sorry 
Um, what was his name? I can't remember his name. I'm sorry, guys. But she told me his name. I could tell she was getting kind of teary-eyed. And she started talking like, you know, he, he got really sick. You know, I spent the last seven years taking care of him at home in order to keep him from going to the nursing home. So that's been my life for seven years, is just taking care of him. And he passed away. I said, oh, do you have kids? You know, were your kids? She's like, no, I have kids. And they check on me all the time, but with COVID, I wasn't able to see them or my grandkids. I haven't seen them for three years. And they weren't able to come when he died, so I didn't have anybody here. And then she started getting teary-eyed, and I was starting to get teary-eyed because, and this was like a lot f for her. I can't imagine her having to go through this on her own. The person that you, she, I think she said they were married like 60 years or something like that. Ugh, I hate, I hate COVID-19. can go burn in hell. <laughs> Anyway, so she said, you know, my husband, she, we were talking and she was talking about how much her husband loved her cross stitch and he built some of the frames and, and all of this talk. And I kind of, there was a moment where I remember stopping and being like, are you sure you're done? And she got teary eyed and looked at me and she's like, I can't do it. And I, I'm sorry I'm getting emotional. It's like, I get it. So I went through, and I'm going to show you just a few things. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to show you a few things that I got from her. And she, of course, every single item in here was, there was a story. I'm not going to go through the time to tell all of the stories, but every single one, every time I pulled something out, there was a memory. And I got to spend like an hour with this precious woman. I hope that my presence helped. I hope that God used this whole situation, that this was a meant to be, you know, divine meeting of two people. And I think it was, we spent a beautiful hour going through all the cross stitch, talking about the pattern. She remembering, oh, I remember when I did that, or I remember when I bought it. So we will start. I'm not going to go through everything because there was a lot, but I'm going to go through some of my favorites that I got. So my absolute number one favorite that she had, and this is actually a pattern that is still available. It is by, sorry, I already kind of took it apart. So there's the package. It is by Lavender and Lace. Um, there's lavender and lace Victorian designs called the gift of peace and it's just this really cute Santa he's just beautiful he is he is as handsome as ever oh I love it I love this Santa he is just the perfect Santa so this is going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to do him this year. I'll probably maybe sometime in the summer so that he's ready for next year. I'll get him done. But this is this one's happening. And I even he's done on 16 count Ada and I even coffee dyed some Ada I had. It's all wrinkly, sorry. I hand coffee dyed this. I'm going to do a little more. I'm going to I think I'm going to actually take some bleach on it or something to kind of get some more white. Maybe try to make it look kind of like little snow. We'll see. Some paint or something. I don't know. It didn't marble as much as I was hoping. So that's going to happen. Um, ah. Oh, it's got that. I don't have like a colored version of this chart, but this was the poppies that was hanging up in her house that I saw. The big, big giant one. And I snatched the pattern. I don't, I'll want to do it someday because man, it was beautiful. I just don't know when. And I felt like I really wanted that one. Uh, let's see. I got 
this nativity stocking. I love me nativities, so I'm excited to do this. This one definitely is going to happen for Christmas. Um, ah, this one. I don't even. I can't tell you the authors because the way that this is all stored is really, really, really weird. Um, these are really old. So like, she said that she ordered these from like a magazine and she had to get them like shipped. And a lot of these patterns almost feel like they're printed on newspaper. It's really strange. I have no clue, but you know. Uh, let's see. But she's really beautiful. I have no idea who it's by. I'm sorry about that, but um, there was this book. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna drop it. This book in here that I went and got from her. There's tons and tons of different designs in here. Lots of nature designs. Um, lots of animals. Like this, this little fall owl. He's pretty cute. He'd look cute on a seasonal tree. So there's a bunch of stuff in there. All just more nature kind of stuff. And then I got like a really big pile of these Stony Creek cross stitch magazines. And then something called the cross stitcher. There's a bunch of these in here. Tons and tons and tons. And I guarantee you there's plenty in here that I'm going to do. But my favorite one is this, this lighthouse. And the reason why this is my favorite is because it makes me think of my mother-in-law. She loves lighthouses and she had a lighthouse hanging up in her old house. I actually remember it from like the first time I went over there when I was dating her son. But Christmas, Christmassy stuff is my favorite thing. So it's got my favorite thing in there and then it's got her favorite thing. So yes, I'm going to do that at some point. So anyway, that has been my adventures as of late. I apologize for the length of this video. There was a lot. I am going to do my absolute best to get on schedule, try to sort out. I probably won't release anything until after Christmas because, you know, Christmas is in six days. Uh, Nathan is leaving again for Saskatoon for two weeks. So that adventure is happening again of being alone with the kids for two weeks in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of the cold, cold winter. It's gonna be difficult, but we got through it once. I'm gonna get through it again. Um, I don't know about, how, I don't know if I'm gonna, I probably will not film until he's back because there's just no way with my children to keep them contained on my own to do any filming. And like I said, I can't really do it at night because of the you know, camera quality. So I will see you sometime in January for sure. Probably near the end of January, I'll do another video. I do want to say this. Do not say anything in the comments. Don't say anything in the comments. But when this YouTube channel hits 500 subscribers, I will do my very first giveaway. I'm not sure what it's going to be. It's going to be, I want it to be decent. What I'm thinking is um, making a little drawstring bag like I do, I use for my knitting, just like a nice little drawstring bag as well. So that'll be one, so I'll do probably two, so that'll be one and I'll make one of those. Um, and then it's a little project bag. It's just a drawstring bag. And then I want to do a cross stitch kit that I'm put together myself. And I want it to be one that I know that I'm going to do as well so we can kind of do it together. So whoever wins it has basically, I guess, a stitch along that they can, that we can do together. Um, of course, everybody else would be welcome to join in on it, but I want to be able to give a stitch along away. Um, I don't think it'll be a big pattern because um, 
I can't really afford to give away a big pattern, so it'll probably be something small. I have a few ideas. Um, if you have some favorite cross stitch patterns, comment below and tell me, because I am just delving into the whole like over dyed all of these crazy all these designers that didn't know existed I am excited um some of my favorites so far have been blackbird designs the prairie schooler I love theirs um there's uh lizzie kate I think is another one of course the country cottage the cottage garden and then there's some other ones that kind of along those lines. So just comment below. Um, I'm going to leave a just you with just a question. If you want to answer, you can. You don't have to. Um, I like to try to connect more with you guys. So if you have a Chris, what is your favorite Christmas memory that you have? Whether it's from home whether it's whatever it is what is your favorite memory that you have of christmas time that when you think of it it just brings the christmas spirit to you you know like for me it's going to grandma's on christmas day all the noise all the chaos doing the stockings making Christmas cookies with her and just all the family, like all the family <laughs> all together. That is that every year we did that. And that is my big, I think of that and I just feel home. So what's yours? What brings that sense of Christmas warmth of home of, of, Christmas time comment below and I would love to hear it but for now I will say goodbye I will see you in January I should totally film because my birthday's in January that's what we're gonna do I'm going to do birthday I'm going to do birthday vlog so that's what we'll do my birthday's January 19th so that's what we'll do <laughs> that'll be fun all right Maybe I'll eat cake <laughs> while we talk <laughs> Gluten-free cake. Um, but I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have a merry, 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 merry Christmas. Love the ones you're with right now. Hug them tight. And I'll see you later. <laughs>